Okay, we're searching the Bible. We went from the from Revelation. We're going to go back now to the Old Testament, okay? Go back to the Old Testament. And that's why my, my, my mom and them taught us when we were kids. We were like, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Let me look at it to make sure I get it right. Because right? I'm like, I'm like, it's been such a long time. Let's see. Remember what mama told me? Let's see. It goes, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, then come the book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, then comes the book of Malachi. Something like that. Okay, this is a quick thing I want to show you guys. We're going to go to the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book in the Bible after Genesis, okay, in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 20. We talked about the Sabbath. We talked about God's commandments. I'm hearing everybody saying about God's commandments and hearing in the movies and watching the bridge version. And I love to watch the videos online on YouTube. They're nice videos. Videos about the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of John, you know, the visual Bible. Those are very beautiful books. Chal Charlton Heston's Ten Commandments what got me into the Bible. And I'm like, nice. Other than, you know, from learning from family. Beautiful. The Ten Commandments, beautiful. And then when they see God writing the stuff with his fingers, you know, finger on stone, you know, with, with God's finger writing on the stone, not finger of stone, but writing it on the stone. That was beautiful imagery. Even for back then, beautiful. Let's see what he talks about now. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. We're in Genesis still. Exodus chapter 20. Let's read the commandments for ourselves and stop hearing everybody tell us what it is. And you probably got a million videos up there. Listen, I am giving you on my honest account what the Bible says. And let the Bible read for itself. I'm tired of people all saying, well, the Bible says this. Let, what does God say? Exodus chapter 20. King James Version, Old Testament. 20 verses 1 to, let's go to, it's up to go to, it's 20, after 20, 20, you're going to go down, but let's, let's read it. Let's just read, let's read the whole chapter, right? You, you bear with me? Let's see what he says. Let's see it for yourself. Now, this is the this is Exodus when the children of Israel are leaving from, they're still in the captivity, but they just left the captivity of being in Egypt and moving, traveling to the promised land. Before they got, they got to give them instructions on how to live their lives to be more holy and to understand what God expects of them. So people say, well, what does God want from me? What is this God? Everybody wants to add and take stuff from God's word. Keep God's word as it is. Don't add and take from it. Let God's word be. Okay, when they do that, they destroy themselves and twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Let God's word speak for itself. Let's go. Exodus 20, verses 1 to, we're going to read the whole chapter. It's 1 to 26, okay? Be at me. The Ten Commandments. I'll read it fast. Well, I'll do, my, I'll do my best, okay? Let's go. Exodus chapter 20 says, The commandments given. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord God, thy God. Which, thou, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or, nor, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Therefore, we hence to have no idols, nobody we were looking up to as our idol and worshiping, nobody else but God, okay? None of it, okay? No statues, nothing we bow to, nothing else but God. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. This is verse 5. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So we are not to bow down to any statues or monuments or idols or objects, okay? Let God's word speak for itself. Verse 7. Thou, you see, let me see, make sure I'm right, yeah. Verse 7 says, Thou, this is the third part, the third commandment. So the first one, have no other God before me. See right here, one. Second one, don't make any even any graven images that you worship and bow down to. Third one says, Thou shalt not, that's verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh him in vain. That taketh his name in vain. So this thing about, OMG, OMG. No, we're not to be saying that, people. That dishonors God's name. Oh my God. No, we're not to be saying that. If you say, oh my God, help me. That's the difference. Lord, help me. Praying for God, help. That's different. But saying, oh my gee. No, 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 no. Listen, you say some names bad. You disrespect people and call people like in the Quran or in or to Muhammad and stuff. And say names and disrespect them. You might lose your head. How is it you want to disrespect and call God and disrespect God's name and thinking it's okay? I'm not saying you, per se. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, me, myself. I, I, I remember I told you somebody said before, I used to say God's name in vain. I'm like, I did. I used to always say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, oh wow. I didn't realize that. So sometimes you got to be reminded. It's okay. It's okay. But let God, God's telling you, don't use them in vain. Let's go back to what he says now. Go back to the same third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse 8. 
This is where the Sabbath comes from. He said, well, the Sabbath has changed. What well, Sabbath has changed? I'll show you where God said he didn't change. I'll show you that, okay? Let me just find out what real quick here. I'll show you this part first. Verse, fourth commandment, verses 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right? In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within, that is within thy gates. For in six days, six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You know what that said? He blessed and hallowed it. Now, why would God do go to all the trouble to make it and then change it? God said, I am God, I change not. So why would he do that? So let's, let's go further. Let's see now the next commandment. Verse 5. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which thy Lord thy God giveth thee. So children and older, older adults, respect and take care of your parents. Do not dishonor them. You know, if they're following God's rule and, rule and, 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 and law and giving you the right information, don't disrespect them. Honor them. Take care of them. Cherish them. Take care of them, okay? Next commandment. The sixth commandment. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Okay, same thing. No murder, no homicide. So people, stop hurting and harming each other. Let's not kill and harm each other. You know, no, then don't do that. Okay, remember God said, "Vengeance is mine." He will take it back out on the people. Okay, so don't you know that? Do that to violate His law and His will when it comes to this judgment. Verse fourteen. This is the seventh, the seventh commandment. Verse fourteen: Thou shalt not commit adultery, not just in just a physical form of cheating on your spouse, but also in thought and in you know. Thinking about it, well, I know I like her. She looked good. He looked nice. He looked good. I wonder if we could just maybe. Nope, nope. Watching porn and stuff like that too. Same thing. It's fornication, adultery. No, don't do it. Nope, nope, nope. No premarital sex. Sorry, people. No PMS. Nope. You must wait till you're married. If you can't, if you can't wait, if you can't wait because you're burning up to die, get married. Ungodly principles. Get married. Go have a family. Have all the fun you want. Have at it. But don't go violating God's law and say, "Let me do something now. It feels good." It comes at a price. You are God's holy temple. If you violate God's temple and disrespect his temple, consequences are coming. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm speaking in the same. I love you guys. I have to tell you the truth. Okay. And, you know, God said also, confess your faults one to another. Don't confess your sins to one another. Okay. It's not in this commandment. But just let you know, don't confess your sins to one another. You know, that's to God you confess that to, not to another human being. They will use it against you. And above you. That's what happened back then with these confessions. Speak to God yourself directly. He loves you and will listen to you. This is how we're talking to him now when he's talking to us in his word. Okay? Eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal. Don't take it. It's not yours. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. Don't steal the car, the house, the thing, the children, the people. Don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. Leave it alone. Ninth commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay? It's so self-explanatory. Don't lie about your neighbor. I saw him do this. I know I saw him. I think I might have seen him take something. I think I might have heard him say, I think I see. Don't be a false witness. Yes, you know, let your words be yeah, yeah, nay, nay, but let it be honest. Don't lie on your neighbors, okay? Verse 10. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass. Ass means a donkey. Nor anything that is, in thy, that is thy neighbor's. I mean, don't take it, including the lawnmower, the rake, the stove, the Whatever, the, the toys, the tools. I see people stealing packages and stealing kind of stuff. No. Anything you see that's, that's your neighbor's own, that's his. That's hers. He left his money. Go pick it up and give it to him. The mail, no. You see what when people violate God's law? We pay the price. So keep it as simple. That's what he says after. Let's read the rest of it real quick. Okay? He says, verse 18. So remember, he's given this. These are laws given to Moses, right, by God, written with his finger on the tables of stone given to him when they left Exodus, when they left Egypt to go to the promised land. He needed to show them the right way to live and to worship and to how to honor him. Now, I heard some people saying, we got on the Sabbath. Well, and this is something. I love my Jewish brothers and sisters, and it's not a knock against them or people who think the Sabbath as, like, you know, it's holy. You can keep it holy, but don't take it to the extreme whereby like how the children of Israel missed Jesus' second coming because they took too many laws and added it into God's law that didn't need to be and they totally missed God's coming. They crucified Christ. Okay? All of us, we're all, when God said this, he's talking to us. We're the same ones now trying to go to, the, remember I told you, the figurative, we're talking to go to the heavenly Canaan now. We want to go to heavenly Canaan. We are in, we are in Egypt and Babylon, all these bad conditions, trying to get to heavenly Canaan. So we're doing it, us. This is us he's talking about. And us is giving the message to. Again, hence, we're getting the message now to we're reading, to the video, to YouTube. That's what he says. He says this. He told it to the people. People said, oh, wow. And all, verse 18, chapter 20 of Exodus, 
verse 18 says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightning, lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they, they, they removed it. Run out, they ran back ooh, and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, please, and we will hear you. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. I mean, they're so scared of the dread of him. But God isn't trying to burn them up. God isn't saying, you got to be holy and peculiar people. You got to be special. And God said, I'm going to make you special, but I got to try you to the fire of affliction. That you learn later on in the New Testament, right? Verse 20. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you and that his fear may be before you and your faces, that you sin not. Sin means to violate God's law. 21. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Hmm. Moses came close to the people ran away. They were scared, but God, the Moses said, no, no, no. Let me tell you what God wants to do. That's why God needs people to stand in the gap and intercede and to help. Verse 22, idolatry forbidden is the title. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. Do you hear what that means? They don't make any image of God that in gold or silver and say, even the ones that make it sometimes in the church as a picture of it, because now we have issues. Is God white? Is he black? Is he Asian? What does God look like? I told you what Revelation said he looked like. Eyes of flame and fire, hair of white like wool, foot like furnace, burnished brass, beautiful and holy. He doesn't have a color. I see here of white and black. You see some of the murals and stuff, paintings on the wall. And again, people have gone through history and changed the colors of things, even in the books. You got to know your history. So, if God said to make an image on him, what are we doing? You see only violent gods know what happened? We made images, now look what happened. Here we are in this mess. What does God look like? That's not my God, it's your God, it's not my God. Follow what God's asking. Anybody, anybody said also even about the altars. Listen to the altars. He's so peculiar. What did he say about the altar? The altar now, he said, continue from the same chapter. He says, verse 24, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereupon thy burnt offerings. That's back in the Old Testament. The New Testament, the sacrifice have done away with, but Jesus was sacrificed. He is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. He is the ultimate sacrifice now. So when he sacrificed it, that was the end of all the sacrifices of that kind of stuff. Okay? So no more the sacrifices of the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament points to the New Testament. New Testament builds off of the Old. So they, they need to go together. And you, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice for everything. Once and complete. That's it. Okay? So make an altar without anything. He says... You know, no, no shops and stuff. You know, he says, he says, um, let's go again. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereupon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Like even when you heard about Solomon, and when Solomon spoke in the temple, very nice stuff. You know, good. You know, and delegated the temple to him, and God gave him the dream. Such beautiful stories. God talking to you in visions and dreams. Hollywood, you got nothing on the Bible. Nothing. You can build off of the Bible, but you got nothing on the Bible. Sorry, just gotta say. Okay, here he says, and, an, and if, and if that will make unto me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. God likes it plain. Do you know our bodies also like our living vessels, almost like altars to God? How we take care of our bodies? God wants us plain and simple, innocent as we are. Don't add stuff and don't do all things to God. If you've done things in the past, done it. Always say, Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Forgive me what I've done and be repentant. God says, okay, I forgive you. But don't go willful sinning. None of us should be willfully sinning. God will destroy us for that. He knows what's going to happen, okay? He says now, verse 26. Well, he is something interesting. For those people like to go up with those long skirts and stuff back then, you know, on the, on the altar. Now, verse 26. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto, thine, unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereupon. Now, here's something interesting. You see people have those, 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 long, um, those long altars dedicated to the different groups and tribes back in the days, ancient days. I want to see something like Incas and all this stuff. And these, things, these long things, they go up to the high places to, to honor them and they wear their robes and they, all that stuff. And even then, God is saying, cover yourself up. Don't do that because they might see you and they look on your clothes and see you naked. And men still looking at the groomers' clothes, all that stuff now. And people still looking up on your stuff. God's a God of order, not of, not of the stuff you see happening there. You know, so we got to do it right, okay? So we're going to go find out what God said about his law because people said, oh, the Ten Commandments have been changed. It's been changed. God says, I am God to change not. My law didn't change. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law, not to, not to destroy the law, okay? Let's find what it says in Matthew, okay? Continue with that. Go to Matthew. Thank you.